Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So here I've got a bit of an all, a long video here. Uh, this was from um, last week. This was from a job I went to, which was a Valen Ecotech. Uh, that the two hoses, the flow and return hoses, uh, had split and they'd flooded the whole boiler. Um, so I picked up a load, or well, ordered up a load of parts to be ordered, um, and then come back a couple of days later when the customer was available. Um, and basically, I just thought I'd go through what happened and what I'd done because it, it, it went on and on and on this one, really. Um, so basically, as you, uh, I'm explaining in the video there, them two rubber hoses, they've been updated now for uh, just copper solid ones. So I just thought, um, let's run through, see, what, see what's gone on. As you can see, that air, in, air intake hadn't even, hasn't even got the bracket installed onto the uh, G10 seal. Um, so you can see what sort of life it's had. Um, where they can't even be bothered to put the uh, the bracket on, and I think I even found it in the boiler later on in the video. <laughs> so yeah, here we go. So just getting into it now. So um, just explaining what what's gone on really. So I've, I'd already pre-drained it down because obviously it flooded. So I'd isolated it, drained it down, and left it for a couple of days and isolated it. So the power was already off anyway. Um, so yeah, just getting into it now. I'm just starting with the uh, thermistors here, so just on the uh, fly and return pipes, just getting them off. I've never done this job before, so I'm probably doing it in completely the wrong order, whatever. Um, but I just thought I'd just get on with it. Um, so yes, yeah, starting off with the thermistors, just getting them off, then pulling the clip out of the uh, you know, where it goes down into the into the body down there, um, and then I will struggle trying to get that out of there. Um, so yeah, just I'm just going to voice over bits and pieces as I go through. So here what had happened is I'd managed to get that flow pipe out, it was very tight, um, and then it just freed up a load of water that was still in the heat exchanger even though I'd fully drained it down, or I thought I'd drained it down. Uh, so I just got underneath and opened up the, uh, the drain valve just into a little tub that's underneath there, and uh, just left that running. Uh, Now just moving on to the return side which is just a uh, a nut that goes on to the pump uh, so just undoing that now and then uh, getting that free and now just getting it out of the heat exchanger just with a bit of uh, a brute force you can probably hear me uh, a couple of noises where I was pulling quite hard trying to get it out it made quite a seal so that was really really tough to get out and then we can just pull that free once that's out and there we go one offending item out of the way and here is the new pipe slightly slight different end on there but it, it does work and it comes really pre-made like that so it does slot you just got to put the rubber washers on and now i'm turning my hand to the uh, to the flow pipe so just get that one out uh, which again put up a bit of a bit of a struggle a bit of brute force a bit of pulling it out there you go so all out and uh, another offending article out of the way and with that one out of the way then i'm able to feed in the return pipe from the left round to the right because the other one had that rubber uh, section in the middle which made it flexible so obviously i could pull it out nice and easy so this is the easiest way that i found to get it in just putting the rubber washer on uh, ready to do up the uh, nut onto the uh, onto the pump.
Once the pump nut was tightened up, then I was able to get the uh, flow pipe in. So as you can see, it's swaged halfway down. It's almost like a, um, uh, like a, like a flexible socket. So you're able to slide it up and down inside there. So it enables, enables you to get it into place and then slide it out into the uh, bottom of the heat exchanger. And in actual fact, what I found easier was to actually take that apart, put the bottom half in first, then put the clip in, um, and then put the top half in, slide it down, and then slide it up into the bottom of the heat exchanger. As you can see, I'm trying very hard, moving it, making sure that it's in, because I wasn't, I wasn't too sure if it was in. Um, but yeah, it did feel it, and then I was able to put the clip on uh, the flow and the returns, and then that seemed to be okay. <coughs> Now I've got my trusty Makita pump out um, and then I'm going to pump up the expansion vessel uh, just to make sure that I'm not going to get any recalls and just make sure everything's all, all as it should be. Now the expansion vessel's done, now I'm able to close off that drain point underneath the boiler and then we can start trying to get it filled up and then see what's going to happen next. And just because once again, obviously the boiler was flooded, I don't know what's going to happen after all this. So once I've repaired the leaks, then I need to see what electrical factors are, are going to be damaged or you know what needs to be replaced really. So it was coming up with um, F61 and F67 I think and a few other different faults. So there are a few issues. Here I'm just filling up the boiler and I'm just checking them pipes because I wasn't sure if they were going to hold. Um, I wasn't too sure so I was just double checking all the time, just filling it up, double checking. Um, and I've got new, I had new um, knobs for the front as well. So I'd, I'd brought pretty much everything with me that I could see so far. Here, I think I'm just getting the stubs of plastic that had broken off that had gone into the um, that were into the potentiometers on the circuit board. Um, just so then I was able to put in the new knobs. And now it's just a case of turning the boiler on and then seeing what's going to happen. I know I've got water in there. I know I've fixed all the leaks. Um, so now it's just a case of seeing what's what's going on. So I think I was getting F61 um, or something along them lines, which was leading me back to the gas valve. Um, so I'm assuming that I've got wet. Um, so I think I ended up having to change that as well now. On this one, I've had an absolute nightmare. So basically, these 
pipes at the back here. They come sometimes, or the older ones come with a rubber uh, section in here, um, halfway down, um, and basically they they burst um, and flooded the boiler the other day. So I drained it down, made it safe, etc. Ordered up some parts to come back. So I've replaced these, um, all good. Um, after doing that, filled the boiler back up again, pump was stuck, sorted that out, or freed it off anyway, so it's running nice and strong. Then it was coming up with F F20, oh, what is it? F75 low water pressure. Um, I was testing the, so if you press the minus on here, it will tell you what the pressure is now. That's at 1.3 bar. It was actually saying 2.3 bar. Um, so when I was topping it up, it was going way past, so it was saying water pressure issue. Uh, so I've changed it over. That's now resolved. Now the boiler is getting to this stage. So we can get it on, giving it a demand. Pumps running, pressure sensor is good. Then it will, oh, we have sort of plugged it in. Okay, so yeah, it's going straight to F27. Um, so I believe the gas valve's probably got wet as well. And to change the gas valve, we need to drop the whole fan out. So we need to obviously disconnect the power. Probably should have done that first. Um, and then we need to undo these these three at the top here. And then the fan and the gas valve will come out as a whole. So you can see we've got the new one here. So we need to change over this gas connection at the bottom. and then undo these screws, put it on. Okay, so now I can get it to light after replacing this, um, but it's carrying on ticking and dropping out. So I'm gonna to have to take the electrodes out and have a look at them. Okay, well, I think it's safe to say that they've seen better days. So we'll give them a clean up, see what happens after that. And as you can see on this, not really a lot's going on. So it's, it's just sitting there. The fan's just running the whole time. Um, I've obviously replaced the PCB. You saw the state of the um, electrodes. Uh, so I've I actually ended up replacing them because they were way far too gone. Um, so I replaced them as well. Um, and now uh, we'll see what else is required. Um, and I think uh, next up is yeah, me just replacing the circuit board uh, because it wasn't, um, it wasn't recognizing that the flame was lit. Um, and it kept on coming up with F61, even though the gas valve had been replaced. So go along with that as well. And yeah, that got it all up and running. As you can hear, you can see my hear my analyzer in the background. Um, and all the FGA readings were good, max and minimums. Um, so yeah, happy days on that. Um, this is out the old gas valve. So I replaced the board uh, because, I don't know if you saw, but it, I don't think it showed it, but the temperature gauge was, it was saying 32, then it would jump to 52, back to 32, 52, and then it would stabilise, then it would jump back up again. And that's a, a quick way of telling that the, the board is on its way out. Now, I've gone through all of this pain to get to this point, so I'd already had the board on me, so why wouldn't I change it? You know, it's just not worth it. Um, so do just need to mess around with the, uh, with the gas the ratios a little bit, but other than that, it's pretty good. 